I hope you watched my five minute video on this subject which sets up what we're going to do here. What I'd like to emphasize is that we use exactly the same routine steps for all of our images. Seascapes, landscapes and all of those in between. Some of those steps will need more or less work. It'll depend on the image we begin with, but the routine is remarkably similar for every single image we create. Now I've chosen this seascape simply because it needs all of those camera raw steps. So let's make a start in Adobe Camera Raw, but remember Lightroom or almost any other software will be fine too. We're starting with step one and the optics, which are called lens corrections in Lightroom. Now when we open up the optics, they're made up of two sections. One is to remove chromatic aberration. That's that colored fringing we sometimes see around the edges of dark subjects against the light. There's almost none in this image, but there's no problem with ticking the box anyway. This one I think is the important one here, because as I tick and untick this, you can see exactly what's happening. The software knows what lens was used, it knows what the distortion in that lens is, and it's providing a solution. Now you can see the difference it makes, it even affects the exposure around the corners and edges. Hence the need to consider this as one of the first options we choose. The next option is geometry. Now we don't have very many geometrical shapes in this image, but if I just tick the automatic button here, you can see that it will correct that sloping horizon. Let me remove it and reselect it. If of course these automatic tools don't work, we do have manual sliders to be able to do exactly the same thing. But 99 times out of 100, these work pretty well. Now the next stage is to select the crop tool because it doesn't make a lot of sense to manipulate the edges and corners of this image and then crop them away. But it also gives us a chance to check that geometry and we can see the horizon there and the straight line of the rule of thirds. So we've got a pretty straight image. I'm just gonna drag down the top to tidy up the composition there. We've got a strong point here. We've got a lead in. So I think that's pretty good. We'll hit the enter key and move on from that point. The next stage is white balance, but this particular image, I'm gonna open up the basic tab here. There's the white balance tool. If we select that, what we need to do is to select any area of our image that has a neutral color, but is not completely burnt out or blocked up. So we could select a little bit of the water here, but because the image is so pale, it's not having a great deal of effect, but we can revisit this at any stage. The next step is exposure. Now exposure is made up of these sliders here. So all I tend to do with these sliders is to look at the image and virtually do what the image is giving me guidance to do. First of all, we can look at the image and say, well, it's very bright, so let's bring down the highlights. We can bring down the exposure while looking at that histogram up at the top there, and then we begin to see some of the image coming through. We can revisit these sliders at any time, so it's not a problem at all. I don't think I want to do too much with the whites and blacks just yet, but let's put the shadows up to push a bit of shadow into those darker areas. And as a result of that, maybe we can drop the exposure down. So we're beginning to see some of the qualities coming through. Now we can now look at whites and blacks. And if I move the slider to the right, if you look up at the histogram top right, I want to avoid any little white lights coming up in that top right corner. Now it's probably going to be just a couple of minute little spots. So they're not critical, but I'll just back off of those and do the same with the blacks the other way. There you can see the blacks are blocking up in some areas, but we can look at the image and see that 
Not very many areas because we still see good detail, but we'll just back off a little bit. And that stage is now done. None of these are set in stone. We can always revisit if there's a need. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. The next stage is to move on to contrast. Now I very rarely use the contrast slider here. I'm referring to the mid-tone contrast provided by Clarity. So let me step that up quite a bit. And maybe even the little dehaze. I don't use it very often, but let's just add a bit just for taste, so to speak. And finally now we can move on to some color. So now I'm going to step my vibrance up quite a bit. Maybe even a little saturation if we want. Now perhaps we can re-evaluate if we've got the white balance correct. So I could pick up that white balance tool once again. And just click in this area and now we're getting somewhere. So now I'm more or less ready to move on to the strategic editing. But at this point I'd probably take just a minute to take a good look at the image and see if I wanted to adjust any of the sliders above, maybe the exposure a little bit. I do like nice, richly exposed and images with a bit of impact. I could decide to tweak the whites now, but you can see that even if it's affecting anything, it's probably affecting the little bit of sky above that bank of clouds. So I think I won't push that too far. So I think for the moment I'm quite happy with that and we're going to move on to strategic editing and I'm going to start at the top. Just before I do, let me just zoom in and draw your attention to some of the dust marks that we have here because at some stage I'm going to have to deal with them and you can see that there's quite a few there and I mention it here because they just caught my eye there for a moment. Control zero will fit the image back on screen. So let's reach for the masks. Now you would think I may want to pick up the sky mask, but no, I want to pick up my graduated mask. Now they call it a linear gradient, linear mask, call it whatever you want. But once I select that, I can click and drag and we can see the area we're going to affect. Now we can move this after we've made any changes, but we've got a problem to deal with straight away because I want to darken the sky and give it a nice blue top, but I don't want any of that coming over this rock. So I've got an option here. I can subtract my mask from the rock by going to the subtract button and I'm turning to one of the newer tools, which is select object. Now I'm going to start painting just around the edge of that rock. Don't worry that your mask appears to have disappeared. It'll reappear in a second. All I'm saying to the software here is remove that from that graduated filter. And there it's done a pretty good job. So now I can go over to the controls on the right hand side. I can drop maybe the highlights down. I can bring the exposure down. but we don't have a great deal of color in the sky. So maybe I can bring into play this option down here. Click on the white panel. We need to make sure that if we're going to do this, that we pick the right color. We don't want something that's going to look false. So we need a believable blue color and we may want to even drop it back a little bit so we're not oversaturating it, but that's going to be a personal preference. In fact, I think it would take a little more. And when we're happy, we can click OK to that. Now we could also increase the saturation of that a bit and take a look and see what it's doing because it's having an effect on the yellow around the top of the clouds. So that looks quite attractive. So I'll stay with that. Now we can begin to see the burnout we've got in this image by the exposure to the right. And it's not much, it's just those little tiny areas of cloud, but we can deal with those later as well. Now I'd like another linear mask at the bottom, but I'm going to use shortcut keys here, G. Press the G key, click and drag. 
but you can see I've got the same issue here that I had before. I don't want to make this area too dark. So I'm going to subtract and I'm going to use exactly the same technique with the select objects. And I just want to say to Photoshop, look, I want to do a bit of work at the bottom. Don't include that. Just give it a few seconds. Now I can decide if I want to or how much of the exposure I want to drop. Sometimes when I'm doing this work within these gradients, I will split or spread the whites and blacks because what I'm effectively doing here by moving the blacks left is darkening, which is what I want. But by moving the whites to the right, I'm also creating some contrast. But we don't want to do this so we block things up. But we can see a little light on the top left there, but it's not significant. And we'll deal with that anyway in a moment. So once we start to sit back and look at the image, now we can see we've got a pretty robust image in the center, but I would suggest the left and right sides are, are, are the weakness and the left side is the biggest weakness. So the obvious choice is another one of those linear gradients. Touch the G key, click and drag, and I'm bringing it into this area, this sort of area, because I've got some experience with the tool. But let me just demonstrate that if we were to drop the exposure here, drop the blacks, raise the whites, fiddle with the exposure a little more. If I wanted to change my mind, I can bring this on further. I can take it off. I can compress the gradient a bit so it's not, or it's a little bit more I suppose tight, is that the right word? If we pull it right across here, we've got a long wide gradient, but you get the idea. And of course we can rotate it as well. But let's assume for the moment that we're happy with what we've done there. And it follows, we're going to do exactly the same on the right hand side with the G key. But again, I've got problems with the rocks here. So we'll do the same as we did before. We'll select the subtract and we'll use objects and we'll say to Photoshop or Camera Raw, don't take that lot. And we'll see what it does with that. Hasn't taken it all, so I'll just help it out there. Give it a second to do its job and a bit more there. And then I'll look down at the bottom. And this sort of area is what I want to do. I think that should more or less cover it. And there you can see, if I just pick this up and move this out of our way, you can see what a great job it's done. And it's why I say these masks make this sort of work an absolute delight these days. So here I think we want a little bit less, so not too much darkening. A little bit down on the blacks, maybe a little on the whites to give that contrast a boost. But you can see things are coming along quite nicely. So what I can turn my attention to now is perhaps lifting the tones of the rocks a little bit in the darkest areas. Now there's a number of ways we can do that. Let me pick that up and drop it back. Let's turn to one of the other tools here. Let's go up here and pick up our brush. I always like using the brush when we're not working in a, an area that's really vital we get the edges right. So here, if I'm going to do something in the dark areas of these rocks. I'm going to need to raise the shadows a bit. Don't worry about doing this with it before you've actually seen what you're doing. We can adjust them later if we need to. Just a little bit of each. The flow rate, I'm going to drop that down to around about 20 something. You can see I've got a tool, a brush here with a soft edge. So now I can just brush gently over those rocks. And I can decide how much of that dark tone I want to bring through. And if necessary, of course, it does mean we've got to bring the image up and maybe even drop the brush down. And these are the little bits which generally take the longest because we want to take a bit of care. After all, it's working a treat. We might as well make use of the advances that the masks are giving us. So you can see the effect. And a lot of this is going to be purely personal. Hit Control-Zero. Let's have a look at the one down at the bottom here. 
I don't mind that that one's a little bit darker to be honest because our eyes are going to float over the top of that and in fact the bottom part of that let me hit control zero again I just caught that with my with my cursor there I think that's a little bit on the light side so on this stage I'll tell you what we can do let's hit another brush use the shortcut keys rather than go up to the blue circle with the white cross I'm touching the K key so I've created a new mask what do I want to do well it's basically exposure there so let's drop the exposure down and now I can darken that down because I want the viewers vision to sort of ride over that bottom bit into the rest of the image and I think my final mask and one of my favorites is the radial mask J is the shortcut key but there it is radial when I move on to the picture and double click there it is I want to switch it from the inside to the outside the X key does that but we do have options under this little control here as well I'm sure we've got one there there it is invert it says here alt X that's funny I'm sure I can do it with an X yeah I've just touched the X key now what I want to do here is to apply a little vignetting so I'm just going to drop the exposure a little bit in the outside edge not very much at all in fact I've gone so far back that it's brought the the shading back so I obviously didn't do that very much so there we can see the difference now let me go back to the basic tab so we get rid of all of those masks on screen and I think we need to take five and just review what we've done so far now the next two stages I always refer to these as attention to detail now the first of those is going to be the spots in the sky so I'm going to right click over that area I'm going to zoom to 100% holding the spacebar I can click and drag until I can see the top right corner now the reason we can see quite a few of these dust marks is because I'm using a wide angle lens because to include movement in the water I've set my aperture f22 which makes sure that all of these little pesky marks are clearly focused so even those that we may not have seen at f8 we clearly see here but it really isn't a big deal because what I'm going to do is to select my healing brush here for the moment we've got a way to visualize the spots but for the moment I don't do that I just deal with the most obvious ones and all we need to do is to click on them and as you can see as I'm talking I can do this very very fast and once I've got rid of all of the marks in this area of the image that I can see then I will just scroll to the left and deal with some of the others don't worry if you can see a couple of faint ones because I'm going to suggest a way to do those in a second so if I've cleaned up an area like this I'm going to touch the spacebar click and drag and then I would move all the way along the top to the corner down to the bottom and along the front now in a lot of images you won't see anything on the bottom half of the image but we've got a seascape here and sometimes flat sand is no different to the sky as you can see here so I don't think you want to watch me tap every one of these spots because as you can see the sensor on my camera was in bad need of cleaning when I took this photograph and I think it was cleaned shortly after so I'm going to continue to do that but once I've gone right the way around then I'll go back to the top right because now I'm looking for those that I'm probably about to miss if we tick to visualize the spots we get a slider here so we can make them more visible they tend to look like little donuts so now all the ones that I really couldn't see I now can see and I can deal with them as well now you're going to spend three to five minutes doing this but this is time well spent that's why I call it attention to detail anyone that spends all the amount of time we take to go to places to shoot our images and then won't put in the last five minutes to do this sort of thing 
Well, I'll reserve judgment on those. So that's it. Remove that one when you're done and you know you've got a perfectly clean image because you've been over it twice. Now I have a clean image and I'm sure your camera won't be quite as bad as mine anyway, but I have noticed one or two little spots around here. Can you see a little ghost there, 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 and one up there, and a couple of faint ones there? Well, I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to make sure those little marks are well covered and I'm going to give them a touch. This one, let's try that one next. Oh, that didn't work too well. Let's keep clear of that. Just keep clear of that a little bit. The one up the top, that's done that. This one does a terrific job. There we go. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for these last two. There's one there, so let me get the brush back and adjust it so that it just covers it nicely. There you can see it, and I'll continue. There's the other one. I'm not sure what they are, but I can't have them in the sky. They have to go. Control zero will fit the image back on screen. And now I think I need another little timeout and look around to see if there's anything else that I need to deal with before we turn to dealing with distractions. Different, I suppose, to dust because distractions could be shells sitting on the beach which are reflecting back the light. In our case we've got three areas of highlight in the sky on the left hand side which I'd like to address next. Now to deal with these and to make sure I'm happy with the result I'm going to zoom in a little bit but I'm going to go and select this tool here Content Aware Remove because what I'm going to do here using the brush is to see if I can remove those highlights and let the AI do the hard work for me. Now the good thing about this is we can hit Control Z at any time if we're not happy with what's been done. Try making a bigger brush if that doesn't work too well and see if that helps. But if not you can try making a much smaller brush and painting around a little bit closer and seeing how you can deal with these. Now, quite often, we may need a couple of touches. And if I do that, I know that I can just hit Control Z at any time and start to remove some of these. But they're very small on the screen, so they're going to be pretty insignificant. So a little bit of care here. You can see I'm dropping the size of my brush down. But I would move along and do all three of these just to take that highlight away. That didn't work too well at all. Let me make a bigger brush, cover the lot and see if that does a better job. You can see from time to time it actually does. So don't give up if things don't go according to plan on the first touch. I'm going to leave it at that, but I think you get the idea. And as I'm going along here, you notice I spotted a couple of other little marks and I've just got this one to do exactly the same technique. Now when I zoom out no one would ever be any of the wiser that I'd been working in that area. Look in the interests of video time I would suggest that at this stage I would probably go back to my basic tab and if I wanted to make any slight adjustments, sometimes once we've done all the work, we do want to make a little adjustment. We may want to just brighten things a little bit, darken things a little bit, you know, the sort of thing. But there does come a time where we need to open this up into Photoshop and do one or two last little touches to finish. Now, once I have the image opened up into Photoshop, there's usually a couple of things that I like to do, but to be honest, we could have done them in Camera Raw. Now, because of the manipulation I've done on this image, can you see a little bit of lightness around this area here? Maybe a little bit along the edge there. And this little bit of the water there is a little bit too pale. So what I'm going to do here is to select my Burn tool. This is just a preference. I just like this way of working. Look up at the top of the screen because 
I'm going to select, I think I'll select highlights because I think they're highlights. If they don't go down fast enough, I'll choose mid-tones, but I think that's going to do the job. I will zoom in so we can see it more clearly and reduce the size of the brush. You can also see the exposure is set fairly low at 5%. So as I paint just over the edge there, you can see I can remedy that little bit of ghosting. We had a bit more over here. So I'm just going to do that and maybe tone that water down a little bit, going over that quite a bit to take it down as you can see, because it's near the edge of the picture. We don't want that to distract our viewers. Just little tips and tricks here. Control zero will fit the image on screen. What I often do next is a little bit of work which sometimes helps the leading lines. If I've got lines through the image where the water is swirling, maybe I'll make a little more of that. Maybe a little more of the highlights on the waves in the middle distance. To do that, I'll use the dodge tool. Again, I'll use highlights and keep the exposure down to about 5%. But what I'm looking for here is the areas like these which are leading into the picture. So I can just do a little bit of lightening of the exposure here. You can see it's not having an enormous effect here because I think these are probably running down into what the software would deem mid-tones. But there you can see I can just raise them. Let's drop it to mid-tones for a second because if I did want to bring them up a little bit down here, there you can see I'm now having a little more effect on those. A little bit of sparkle around this middle distance now. Why am I working around here? Well, this is the, this is the important area of the picture. And maybe where the surf is rolling over, just to give that a bit of sparkle. This is why color balance, when we did that, is so important. I see so many seascapes where the authors crank up the color and all of this white water where the surf is rolling over is almost royal blue. It just looks ridiculous. And all it takes is one tick of one tool. Now we can go on forever doing these little tweaks, but my last one is sponge, saturate, because I just want to put a little bit more into the colors here. And in this middle distance here, you can see the warm colors coming through. Just in the area that's vital for the interest of the image we've produced. An optional extra. Go to your image menu. Image size. Uncheck the width and height by clicking the chain length and add 300, maybe 400 pixels on the width. This is a personal thing. And there we have the image which I would say is completed. For those who are still with me, well done. But you can see the appeal now of five minute videos. Sometimes though, we just need to see the steps all strung together. I hope you agree. Well, if you're still watching, I guess you do. A comment below helps, but I'll see you next time.